Welcome back everybody. This is going to be our third installment on our Pro Angler build series. Today we're going to be doing the Torquedo 403C, putting it on the back with the Hobie transom mount. Let's get into it. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is remove the steering cover off the back. So it's just four screws and it does go straight into the boat. So when you're done doing this, you do want to replace um, the two screws that go into the boat and we'll show you that. Then we're also using some little bit different hardware. Torquedo does give you hardware, but it's a little bit too wide for the mounting plate that Hobie provides. So either you'll drill out the Hobie mounting plate to a quarter inch hole if you're going to be using the big Allen bolts that uh, Torquedo supplies you with, or what we're doing is we're just dropping the diameter of the bolt, we're changing it to a Phillips, and it's going to work the same. It's just whatever is convenient or whichever way you want to go about doing it. So your two at the top are brass inserts and those are going to be replaced by what's in the package that Hobie gives you for the mount. The two back ones, however, do go straight into the boat. So once you remove these, you want to take these and replace where you took them out. Once you've got that cover removed, the next thing you're going to do is grab the, your Torquedo bracket and mount this to the Hobie bracket. And like I said before, these holes are drilled out a little bit smaller than what comes with the Torquedo hardware, so we're dropping the size of these bolts. But all we're going to do is get our washers and our bolts. We're going to feed those up the bottom. And then... We're going to mount it right into the Torquedo plate. The only reason I'm doing it like this is so I don't drop all my parts and pieces huh, when I'm putting it back up. So you'll put on your other washers, which we're using smaller ones for the top. And then just finger tighten a couple nuts and then do the same for all four. After you got your nuts and bolts in, you want to tighten everything down. Do be careful with stainless steel materials because if you tighten them too fast, they'll actually bind up on you. Uh, they get too hot and the coating that's on them will actually stop it from being able to be removed. So tighten it slowly and then snug it down. So in your package, you'll actually have a few screws to replace the ones that you took out of these inserts. And depending on if you have the 12 or the 14 dictates which set of holes that you're going to use. So for the 14, which is a longer boat, you need to use the further away holes. For the 12, you'll use the closer holes. Just finger tighten them first just so you get them in there without cross threading anything. After you attach the plate just at the front here, we're going to attach the back to the back handle H rail to the plate. So they come set up like this. After you break them apart, as you can see, you're going to have the H rail in, in the hole and then the riser to the plate. You only do this for the 12. The 14 does not need the riser and will actually use a smaller bolt, but the rest is the same. It goes around the bar and it clamps. So I'll stage the spacer and the top part of the bracket underneath before I put the bolts in. This just makes it a little bit easier to line everything up and put it through in the first try. And then you will put the nuts and the washers on top of that. After you have this bolted on, it'll be time to set up your Torquedo. So when you first get this, it actually comes with this piece here, which is a sliding bracket that goes up and down the shaft. You do have to put the lower and upper collar on yourself. So we've already done that. And really the thing is, you just want to have the up and down, which is this fin here, just above where your power comes in so that you could tie it without getting interfering with anything uh, as far as the electrical goes. Just sitting right on top. It slides very, very easily right into the mount and then locks down with this push tab. So you twist it snug and then push it down. It's not going anywhere. You just adjust your motor, which this one is a little off. So if you come over here, you can loosen this up and you can adjust how that motor sits on the boat. 
The other thing that you want to notice too is there are spots to trim this. Most of the time, depending on what you bring, we stick it back because once your boat is in the water and is loaded down, it's going to put the motor at a, uh, basically pushing you up instead of forward. If you trim it back, even though you're way down in the back, your uh, power is still going to be pulling you forward instead of trying to push you up and basically you'll get more speed and more efficiency out of it. We're getting the boat ready for the throttle mount. Now that your motor's in, you need to attach all the things for pulling your motor up and down as well as controlling it. So Hobie does make this flat mount, which we add a mighty mount to. They used to make a mount specifically for the lock and load, but discontinued it. So now we have to use this. And when you are putting these together, be sure to mount it at the edge, because if you put it where it's centered, you're gonna run into a problem trying to put your nuts and having your bolts come through too far or too close to the mount itself. So do it towards the edge, it'll save you a lot of hassle. I just line it up there and drill it through with quarter inch holes and then put your hardware that Yak Attack gives you. So now that we have the mount made, we've got the lock and load Yak Attack Torquedo throttle mount. And on top of that, we've got the Torquedo throttle, which is very simple to use. It's got a neutral spot there. Obviously, it's not plugged in, so we can't turn it on yet. And you do have your magnetic uh, emergency shutoff, too. So attach that to your life jacket just in case you go too fast and fall out of the boat. It also needs that magnet to run. So that'll go over the top. And then right there, you'll have your throttle. And you can adjust it in a few different ways to get it dialed in to whatever's most comfortable to you. So you could really have it right in your lap if you wanted to. What's really nice about the 403 is it's such a light motor that we can get by with what Hobie has provided on this for an up and down cord as well as the reverse lock. So with the reverse lock, for one thing, they give you this bulk, bulk, uh, bulk cord and they give you uh, clips. So this clip here goes to the reverse. So you have to do that so when it puts it in reverse, it can't kick the motor up. And so for that one, we've just got the little ball mount that's up here, and that's ran through the pad eyes that are installed in the Hobies. There's one here, there's one on the paddle keeper, another one in the back for the bungee, and then it goes through the, the hole on the torpedo mount itself, and then to the reverse. It doesn't take much to pull that, so we just use the, the Hobie provided parts. The next thing that we do is the up and down for the motor itself. And again, it's such a light motor, it really doesn't take much effort. So we run it through all the Hobie pieces up to the front. And then here, I tie a loop knot. And the reason I tie a loop knot is so that we can easily connect something like the Hobie handle. And so, very easy handle, but this just gives you a little bit something to grab onto, and make life easier. So we'll put that through there. Voila, and then when we're locking this into place, we're going to pull it forward and to wherever you think the motor needs to be. So right now it's up pretty high. It doesn't need to be that high. It could also rest something like there as long as it's out of the water and out of the way. But what we're going to do is add a ball mount that's also a rail mount from Hobie and slip this over the top. And that's going to be what locks it. So we're going to put that right here and you could do it whatever's more convenient, whatever side you like. Uh, you'll have to play around with it and see what works best for you. So for here, we just mounted the one inch H rail ball and you could do it with the one or the one and a half. It really doesn't matter. You'll pull your motor up, slip it around the loop that you've made in here, and then it hangs up and out of the way. And on this one, it looks like we're gonna have to adjust it and pull it forward just a little bit more. But that's the nice thing about tying a simple overhand loop knot. You can undo it and redo it until you find the correct spot to keep it up out of the water as high as you need. All right, so we fastened the battery to the back of the H crate, which can also be done under your seat or to whatever crate that you own. Uh, just to keep it out of the way, over here, turn it on and it lights up. It shows that the motor's actually at 82% right now. We've had this charged uh, before this. Forward is forward, reverse is reverse, but you turn it on, prop is spinning, and you're ready to roll. All right, so the battery's charged, your magnet's on, you put it in forward, and the prop starts spinning. So this one we do have in a fixed position. Uh, Torquedo does give you a pin to stick in here to keep it from moving. 
You can also put a bolt if you're not planning to remove it. Um, there is also a way that you can connect this to steer it with your rudder. Uh, it is going to be preference. There's some people who will even put sliding foot tracks in. This is the easiest that we do and we do it by using your rudder to control where you're going instead of the motor. So all are great options. It really depends how you want to use it. But this is the most common. And besides that, that's the install. It's very easy to set up. Torquedo really gives you all the parts you need between Torquedo and Hobie and a couple Yak Attack things here and there. Uh, besides that, get on the water, have fun, stay fishy my friends.